Um, my name is Michael Shea. I'm one of the field directors for Count My Vote. Uh, I'm a native Utah, Utah born and raised. Uh, graduated from <laughs> Westminster College. I uh, used to work for Mayor Peter Carew, and now I'm with Count My Vote. Um, so how many people here have heard of Count My Vote before? No. Oh, excellent, it seems like most everybody. Um, but for those that haven't, uh, Count My Vote is a citizens initiative petition drive, uh, and we are seeking to change the way elections are done here in the state of Utah. So currently, as I'm sure most of you are familiar with, uh, we have the caucus convention system. And this is where if you're a registered Democrat or a registered Republican, you get together in your, oh, that's much better. Um, you get together in your local neighborhood caucus meeting, you guys elect delegates, and then those delegates tend to go, or no, they don't tend, they go to the convention and pick the party's nominee. And we feel that system worked great uh, back when it first started in the early 1900s, but we feel as time has progressed and people's lives have gotten busier and busier, um, it's actually become a barrier uh, for people to participate in the process and for people to vote. It also has, uh, become to the point where the delegates don't truly represent the ideals and views of most Utahns, um, especially on a certain side of the aisle. Uh, in fact, if you look at a poll um, amongst general Utahns, education is by far the number one priority of most Utahns. We think we need to improve it, we need to spend more money on it, and, uh, and that goes from K through 12 to higher education. My concern really is in two areas today. One is education. Uh, as you all know, education has been my number one budget priority. I focus on the economy and growing the economy, and I do believe that the way we can best have a growing, expanding economy is having a skilled labor force. And uh, so education is a key issue to make sure we have that. I think is absolutely imperative that as we take the available dollars we have, that the first priority is growth. We make sure that we don't forget the growth. It's about $65 million in the budget that I've proposed. We need to fund that growth as a priority. Second is uh, teacher compensation as represented by the WPU, which I've proposed 2.5% uh, WPU increase. That's about $61.6 .6 million. And again, I think that is critical as we prioritize our available and finite dollars. And thirdly is an issue that's been worked on for some time with our higher education. And that's what we call equity in the institutions. And uh, the college presidents have all worked together on equity funding. And uh, that's about another 20 to $30 million issue that's out there. Once we get those taken care of, whatever money is left over, then we can use for uh, technology, for one-to-one -one devices, uh, et cetera. But those three priorities need to be handled first. And, uh, and I hope the legislature understands that and make sure that they prioritize correctly. But if you talk to uh, a lot of delegates, um, getting us out of the UN, uh, <laughs> keeping, the, keeping the federal government out of grazing lands, and uh, Arresting federal agents for gun laws, um, or enforcing gun laws, are a lot higher. In fact, education placed, I believe, 11th um, in a poll done, and higher education wasn't even on, on the list. And you can tell this is one of the first, um, first truly bipartisan measures here in the state of Utah, because uh, you have very different ideas on how to run a campaign and how things are happening, um, but we're working together, and uh, it, it truly is one of those unique moments where the left and the right are coming together with <coughs> ideals of how the state should run and how everybody should have a voice. And so how are we going to do that? Um, so we're doing this through a petition drive. We've gone to both the Democrats and the Republican parties uh, and asked if they would try to implement these reforms on their own uh, without having to do the whole citizens initiative drive. That didn't work. Um, both parties voted it down. And so we feel, uh, and then we went to the legislature and asked, uh, would you guys be willing to put forth some legislation to change the process? Definitely not. Well, the Democrat Party has said anyone can vote in a Democrat primary. Okay? 
The Republicans in 2003 said only Republicans can vote. The problem with that is all taxpayers pay for the primary. Every one of us pay our taxes and the state funds the primary and yet only Republicans are qualified to vote in the vast majority of primaries across the state because of the, the huge dominance of the Republican Party. And I think there's something philosophically misguided about that premise. So Senate Bill 54, unlike count by vote, we can't statutorily dictate to a party that they have to open their primaries. The Supreme Court has been clear, parties can control, uh, and they can set the standards for who can vote in their primary, and the legislature can't, by legislative fiat, dictate that. And so 54 doesn't dictate anything, but it says that if a party voluntarily meets this standard, then they can continue to control the nominating process. So 54 says a party would have to open its primaries to allow unaffiliated voters the largest block of voters in the state by far. We have been left with the option of gathering 102,000 signatures from around the state. Okay, questions? Uh, you've mentioned several times that this is a bipartisan effort. What about a multi-partisan effort? I understand the logistics of of what you're trying to do, but what about those of us who don't belong to either of the two major parties? Is there anything in what you're doing philosophically that supports the notion of a, other than a, a two-party system, or are you so committed to a two-party system? There are more unaffiliated voters than there are Republicans. There's more unaffiliated voters than there are registered Democrats, okay? Democrats currently statewide represent about 9% of the registered voters. Republicans are about 44%, unaffiliated are about 46%. No, that's an excellent question. Um, I feel I can't, I wouldn't be able to address it. it, it it's not gonna address the two-party system. Um, but I, I feel we can relate by saying that if we, if this passes and legislators uh, up at our, our wonderful state legislature um, no longer have to answer directly to delegates, um, then issues such as education, air quality, um, public transportation might finally have an actual chance of getting passed. Last but not least, when it comes to the issues that are, I'm concerned about, and today is a good example of good weather, no inversion. You know, it looks great out there, and I expect this winter season will maybe be better than last winter season when it comes to inversion and, and the amount of pollution that we see. But out of sight should not mean out of mind. And uh, we've had a number of bills that have been introduced, uh, you know, to, to talk about. And I think the legislature is hearing from the public and uh, responding to heightened awareness of uh, the environmental issues and air quality. But there's a number of them. I'll just mention three that are near and dear to my heart. One is the wood burning issue, which is sponsored by Representative uh, Patrice Arendt. Uh, it's House Bill 154, which again will, is designed to eliminate wood burning in our valley here along the Wasatch Front, particularly Salt Lake Valley. There's about 207 homes out there that use wood as their sole source of heat. As the DAQ studies this issue, we need to look in terms of some kind of program which will allow these people to transition. Uh, whether that's a grant program to allow them to go from wood stove and wood fireplaces to uh, propane gas or natural gas, but we need to get that to happen because it's 5% of the pollution out there and it's, it's easy. It's to just eliminate wood burning during inversions and we will in fact have a dramatic in, improvement in air quality. Uh, secondly, House Bill 41, uh, I put $14 million into the budget for buying new buses that are cleaner, more efficient. Again, I think that's a key issue that needs to be taken care of. That's uh, sponsored by Representative Handy and uh, we're going to replace uh, a lot of these older buses with clear and burning uh, buses, which again is going to go a long ways towards us cleaning up the air. And last but not least is House Bill 121, sponsored by Representative Becky Edwards, which is designed to give the state more flexibility. There's a process we need to go through, but we have the ability to have stricter standards than what are mandated by the federal government. And again, as I've said before, I, I kind of rail against the one size fits all that comes out of Washington on anything. And I think that the states ought to have more flexibility and autonomy to do what they think is best. And this is a, a step in the right direction. So I support Representative Edwards' bill. Because um, we talked to all these 
all these senators and all these House members, and in private they're like, yeah, of course we need education reform. Of course we need to address air quality. It's going to improve our economy. Uh, but they are absolutely terrified of the delegates. They are s scared, and, and, and they're so scared that instead of you know, trying to push forward these messages that they care about, they go the opposite way, and we get these message bills, uh, such as I mentioned, arresting federal officers, sex education bills, that are, not, are never going to make it to law, but they need to do it to appease the delegates. Uh, we have to do it all, we're doing it all by volunteers, um, we want this to be a grassroots movement. Without count my vote, Senate Bill 54 couldn't come forward because, again, we can't statutorily dictate to parties. But count my vote in negotiations with the Republican Party said if the Republican Party would do two things, open the caucus to uh, absentee voting and move the threshold. Uh, it started, they asked for 70 percent, then it was two-thirds, and the final uh, correspondence said, well, the party would at least go 65 percent. Uh, that they would stand down on the initiative. Senate Bill 54 starts with that broke, with that failed negotiation and says if a party doesn't just do those two things but goes much further, then a party could continue to, to um, have its own nominating system. And if it didn't, then they count my vote. Direct primary would be the default that a party would be, that would be the process. There's been a lot of talk about, well, hold it, doesn't this subvert the will of the people. Well, folks, there is no guarantee, number one, that they'll get the signatures, number two, there's no guarantee that it will pass in November, but there is one guarantee, and that is we need to have reforms in our electoral process. Across the political spectrum, we believe that, that there, uh, we need to have meaningful changes. Now, why the language the way it is? Well. If Count My Vote gets the signatures, and if it gets on the ballot, and if it passes, and if Senate Bill 54 passes, then what you have is the vote of the people would reaffirm what the legislature did. The legislature's been listening. To, to reform the process, it, it takes a catalyst. And I applaud Count My Vote for, for the dialogue and for bringing it forward. But to say that, that the mere act, action of going out and getting signatures means that the legislature is somehow block from doing our constitutional duty. Supreme Court case, Carter v. Lehigh, says that both a citizen's initiative and acts of the legislature bear equal weight. Why should the legislature step in? We are elected to represent the will of our constituents. We've passed through an election process. For count my vote to say they represent the will of the people because they're out getting signatures and there's not been an election is a little bit premature. And if they get the signatures, and if it gets on the ballot, then next legislative session, the legislature can, can deal with what should we do at that point. But it is clear that we need changes to the electoral process. It is clear that we need to have increased citizen participation. It is clear that simply going to a direct primary doesn't, there's no reasonable expectation that that will change the turnout. But the provisions of Senate Bill 54, I would respectfully offer uh, to you do provide significant, meaningful ways that citizens' voices would be uh, increased and that the opportunity to participate in the process would be dramatically improved. And so, while it doesn't address the issues with the two-party system, it does address issues that I think as progressives we care about. And maybe finally, in the state of Utah, we can finally pass some legislation we can be proud of.